In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can take a trace bitmap copy like this one and using a homemade filter we're going to smooth it out so we get results like this. Stick with us. So the first thing I want to do for this example is import an image that we can use. So I'm going to come up to file, I'm going to come down to import and in here I've got an image that I've downloaded from Pixabay. I'm going to double click on the image to open it. I'm going to press OK to the settings and we have an image to work with. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and I'm just going to shrink this down. Holding control constrains the proportions so it doesn't change his, his shape. We can zoom in a touch. So there we've got our image. Next thing we want to do is create a vector copy of it. So to do this I'm going to come up to path down to trace bitmap and that will open up our trace bitmap dialog box. So I'm going to drag this across to make the box a bit bigger. I'm going to hold down my mouse wheel and I'm just going to move my image over a little bit. So I've created a video that runs you through all the different aspects of using trace bitmap. Uh, if you click on the link in the top right hand corner you can go and watch that. But for now we're going to be using multicolor. We want to change the detection mode. I want colors. Scans is the number of layers that it creates. So as you can see our image down here is very basic at the moment. So I'm going to increase that up to say 30. And that gives us a lot better image to work with. Obviously the more, more layers you make, the more complex the vector graphic and the slower your computer is going to run. So don't go too OTT with the amount of layers that you want to create. The other thing I'm going to do is press stack. So that stacks up the different layers and it often produces a better image. So now we've got that done, I think I'm happy with the preview. So I'm going to press apply to create that. When the computer's finished, our preview image will disappear and we'll have a vector graphic over on the left hand side here. This one's got a white background. You can opt to take off the background, but what that does is remove the bottom layer. Since we've got white on the eyeballs and the teeth, we'll end up losing part of our image. So I've just left it on for this one. So we can, if we want, get rid of our original uh, PNG image. Let's move that back onto our page. Right, so now we've got our vector tracing. We've got all of these lines where the different um, paths are made up to try and simulate the image. We get all these harsh lines. It'd be nice if we had a way that we could smooth these out. So what we're going to do is create a filter that when we put it over the top it smooths the image behind. So to do this we're going to need our filter editor. So if we come up to filters at the top we can come down to filter editor. So over on the right hand side now we've got our filter editor. So the first thing we need to do is add a new filter. So we can come to this new button, click on that and that adds a filter for us. We can change the name so we can call this blur background. and we have our filter. Now we've got to add the effects. So first thing we need to do is select an effect that we want to add. At the moment it's on blend, so if we go to the little drop down arrow at the end, we want Gaussian blur. So we're going to click on that one. Now we've got Gaussian blur selected and after our little drop down menu we need to add the effect. So we press add effect and that puts our Gaussian blur effect over here and the arrow indicates where it's taking its information from. So in this case it's coming from source graphic. We don't want it to come from source graphic, we want it to come from the background image. So I'm going to come over, put my cursor over the arrowhead and I'm just going to drag, hold and drag to background image. So now it's taken its information for the Gaussian blur from the background image. So the second effect that we need to add is if we come down, we get our drop down menu again, and we're going to come up to composite. We can add the effect. Now, composite has two arrows, so it's taking information from two different places. So, the first arrow we want to be the output from the Gaussian blur, and the second arrow we want to take the information from the source graphic. So, again, we're going to hold on to the arrowhead, we're going to drag across, and we're going to put it on source graphic. So now we've got the information come from the right places. We need to come down to, at the bottom here, under the effects parameters, we've got operator. Currently it's at over. We need to change that to a top, which is down here. So that's our background blur filter created. 
to actually use it we need a shape so I'm just going to use the ellipse tool I'm going to drag out an ellipse we need whatever color it is to be fully opaque so if we open up the fill and stroke dialog box which is this one here we click on this and that'll open our fill and stroke dialog box we need to make sure that the alpha channel which is the opacity of the color is fully opaque and we want the opacity down the bottom to be fully opaque so now we've got a shape we can apply our filter so in here we've got blur background so our blur background filter to apply it all we do is put a tick in the tick box and nothing happens so the reason nothing's happening is because with Inkscape's present settings it doesn't recognize the background so we need to add uh, enable background attribute the easiest way I found for doing this is if we come up to the top here this button with the triangular brackets if we click on this this will open up our XML editor and this is the coded version of our file so you want to make sure that the top one's selected down the bottom here I'm going to press on the little plus to add a new attribute and this attribute we want to type in enable hyphen background and we're going to add a value of new and as you can see we've created this blurring shape so if we get rid of this we can now move our shape around and you can see that it's blurring the background behind it so wherever we put it it blurs what's behind we can adjust how much the blur affects it if we come into our fill and straight dialog box we've got our little blur control down the bottom here if we move this blur control backwards and forwards we can adjust how much it blurs the background so we want it to blur enough to smooth out these these lines so it looks like a smooth gradient so now we've created our filter and we've enabled our background so Inkscape can recognize it we can start doing interesting things so I'm going to get rid of this one so I'm going to press delete to get rid of that so I'm going to try and smooth out the gradients on this back section here the little yellow band he's got around his abdomen so I'm going to come up and I'm going to get my Bezier tool and I'm just going to draw around to create a shape over the top of this yellow section if you're not familiar with the Bezier tool and you want to learn a little bit more I've created a video for this that runs you through how you can create and perfect your paths using the Bezier tool and the nodes tool um, I'll stick a link to it above so now I've created a shape let's make it a light pink or something I'm going to reduce the opacity just for the time being if you recall I said for this filter to work properly the opacity needs to be at 100% but for now which I'll make that light blue so I can see it a bit clearer I'm just going to adjust using our nodes tool the shape of this so if we zoom in a touch we can see that we're over overlapping in places so I'm just going to adjust our paths very slightly so we're just a little bit better not going to make it too perfect but don't really want it extending onto the black because that, that will show up when we start blurring so I think that will do us it's not perfect but it's close enough for what we want so now we've got our path drawn out we need to make it fully opaque so let's select it we make it fully opaque so our filter works if we come into our filters editor at the top here we can turn on the blur background filter so as you can see it's done quite a good job if we go into our fill and straight dialog box we can adjust how much it blurs the background we kind of want just to get rid of those unsightly lines now if you look at our image you can see that around the edges it's drawing in the color from outside of our shape so where it's black you can see it's darkened up the edge of our area and where it's white especially down the bottom here you can see it's turning the edge white this is because blur works by looking at the surrounding um, pixels to so the pixels it's blurring and it kind of takes an average might be a weighted average but it takes an average of the surrounding pixels and uses that to calculate the color of the pixel so when the computer's looking at it it's going to look around the pixel so what happens is around the edges it draws in the colors that are surrounding it so you start getting this darkening around where it's black and you're getting this whiter edge where the background's white so it'd be nice if we had a way that we could hide that so to do that we really need to have our background looking a similar color to the object we're trying to smooth so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm just going to drag a rectangle over the top 
of our existing image. So this is over the top of the path that we're blurring, or our blur path. I'm going to come up and get the selection tool. Then I'm going to use the, the buttons at the top here just to lower it down one level so we can drop it behind our blur shape. So I'm going to click on the blur shape. I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'm then going to hold down Shift. I'm going to select the rectangle. And I'm going to come up to Path and down to Difference. So what's that's done, it's used that shape to cut a hole in our blue rectangle. So if we press Control Z, put it back in position. I'm going to select our blur shape and I'm going to come up to the top here and select our Layers and Objects dialog box. So now we've selected our blur path, we can actually change the name of that because we know what it is. Let's call that blur. To change the name, just double click on the name and you can type in a new name. So we've got blur there now. If we go along to the end of that line, we've got this eyeball. This allows us to toggle the visibility of our um, shape on and off. So if we click on it, we can toggle it off and make it invisible. So now we can see the background behind. So making sure we've got the rectangle selected, what I want to do is make this background mimic the colors of the section that we want to blur. So to do this, I'm going to add a gradient so we can change the color of the rectangle. So it goes from this yellow color at the top down to this dirty, dark yellow at the bottom. Well, I'm going to change the fill of this rectangle to a linear gradient. And we can see here's our gradient bar. And you can see the color change here straight away. So when you create a new gradient, you'll find that one end will be fully opaque and the other end, the other end will be uh, fully transparent. So we don't want this to be um, transparent, we want it to be fully opaque. So I'm going to select the marker at this end and I'm just going to drag the alpha channel right up so it's fully opaque. So now we've got a gradient on here, but both ends of the gradient are exactly the same colour. So the next thing I want to do is come over and get our gradients tool over on the left hand side here. So if we click on this, we get this, hold on, I'm just going to drag us over a little bit. We get this gradient bar. We want to position one of these handles, so if we come over, select it and drag it up, we can position it near the top of our shape that we want to shade, and we can grab the other handle and drag it down to the bottom. So with this handle still, still selected, I'm going to come over and I'm going to select the Colour Picker tool. Then we can come in and select the colour that we want that stop to be. So if we go for a darkish colour down here, something like that, and it will colour it to match. So our background down here now matches the colour of the shape that we want to blur. So we need to do the same at the top. So if we select the node or the handle, we can come down to our colour picker tool. Then with our colour picker tool, we can come up to the top here and we can select the yellow that's up there. So we can adjust this, move it about until we're happy with our gradient. Might be nice to have it slightly lighter in the middle there. So we can double click on the line and add another stop. And this one we can just come over and we can just lighten slightly. I won't do it too much. Somewhere about there I think. Perhaps a little bit more. So I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to just grab my selection tool. So if we go into our layers and objects dialog box, we've now got our blur element, which the visibility has been toggled off at the moment. And we've got the rectangle we've been working on. So we could call that background. Or background edge. So we need to make sure that our background is actually behind our blur layer. So as you can see, the blur layer is higher, so we know that the background layer is behind it. So we're going to turn our blur layer back on. And where we've turned it back on, it's reapplied the filter. So now you can see that where it's reapplied it, the color that it's drawing in from the edge is the color from this background. So we're getting a lot better um, effect. We can actually hide this now. Where it's applied the filter, as long as we don't move anything, it will stay applied. So we can see our filter stays a nicer color. So as I said, if you start changing anything, so if we zoomed in a little bit, it'll reapply the filter and we get the dirty edge again. So to reset that, all you've got to do, turn the background back on, turn the blur visibility on and off, and when you reapply it, it resets the filter and we get a, a smoother finish. So one thing we do need to do is just increase the blur of this a little bit. You can see that some of these lines are still visible. We don't want that. We want it to be a nice smooth gradient. So to do that, we need to select our object. If we come into our fill and straight dialog box, we can increase the blur a little bit. And not much is happening. Why is that? Our opacity is down here. So let's turn this opacity right up. 
Now we'll apply our blur again and we should be able to get a nice smooth gradient. I think that's pretty good. So this, this is great. We've got our color back. We've got the color exactly how we want it. The only obvious defect is that we've got this huge yellow rectangle around it now. Now we don't want to better see this rectangle but the computer needs to better see it to calculate the colors. If we zoom in or out or make a, a copy, close the file down, open it up, every time we do something that changes the image it's going to recalculate the filter and reapply it. So we can't just hide this, this box because um, every time we move it or make a copy all the filter will be reapplied and we get all the dirty background edges again. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to hide it by creating a clipping mask. Now a clipping mask, I've described it in past videos, like a cookie cutter. But what it actually does is just covers up the bits of the elements that we're masking that we don't want to see. So they're still there, the computer can see them, but we can't. So to hide this background rectangle, we need to create a clipping mask. We want the clipping mask to be the same shape as our shaded or our blurred area. So if we click on to our blurred shape. We can press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Now we want to group together our blurred shape and the rectangle. Now currently we've got our clipping shape selected. So what I'm going to do is a sneaky little trick. If we hold down the Alt key and click on the clipping shape again, it will select the shape behind. So now we should have our blurred shape selected. So then if we hold down Shift and select our rectangle, we can come up to the top and we can group them together. So now with them grouped together, we can select the shape that we're going to use as our clipping mask again. We can hold down Shift. We can select the group, the rectangle and our blurred shape. We can come up to Object, down to Clip and over to Set Clip. And that clips away all that background rectangle. So it's still there. We can't see it. The computer can. So now even if we hold down control and zoom in and out, it won't affect our nice smooth gradient within our shape. If we come over to our uh, layers and objects dialog box, we've now got a clipped group. There should be a little pair of scissors on there, a bit hard to see, but there's a little tiny pair of scissors there on top of our little group folder. And we can name this, oh, yellow stripe. So that's how we can blur sections of our image keeping the edges nice and clean. So I'm just going to quickly go over and recap on the different steps that we go through. So step one, we want to create a shape to apply our blur filter to that covers the area which we want to blur. So I've created a shape using the Bezier pen and I've just adjusted it with a nodes tool. When we do this we want to make sure that it doesn't overlap any surrounding colors because that will cause bleeding of the colors when we blur our shape. So step two, if needed, we can create a background shape to mask out the colors of the surrounding areas. So I've created one from a rectangle and I've just used a radial gradient. I'll just hide my blurring shape for the time being. So I've used a radial gradient to mimic the colors of the shape. If you've got more complex colors in your shape, you could always use a group of objects and then clip it to cut out the hole in the middle, or you could use a clipping group. So if you want to learn more about clipping, masking or clip groups, click on the link in the top right hand corner and I've attached some videos there. So once we've masked out the colours of the background, we can apply our blur filter to our shape. So I'll turn my shape back on. What we need to do first though is just double check that we've got all the elements in the right order. So if we look over at the right hand side here, I've cunningly numbered and named them. So at the bottom, we need to be our vector tracing. Above that, we need to have our background masking element. And then finally above that, we need to have the shape that we're going to apply the blur filter to. So I'm going to select my shape. I'm going to come up to the top, go to the filters editor, and I'm just going to apply the blur filter. So now that we've blurred our shape, we can hold down shift, select our background masking element. I'll just go back to the layers and objects dialog box so we can see what's happening on the right hand side here. So with my blurred shape selected and my background uh, mask selected, I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to group them together. The next stage is to clip away all of this background mask. So to do that, we need to duplicate our shape again. I've already done that up here. And then we're going to use this as a clipping mask 
to hide all of this uh, background that we created. So to clip away this background, all I'm going to do is with my clipping shape selected, which is above the group, I'm going to hold down shift, select the group, and then I'm going to come up to object, down to clip, and over to set. And that will hide the background. So now if we click off, we can see that we've got this nice, clean, smoothed area. So I've continued on and I've done the same with several of the other sections. And this is the final result. Um, if you find that the edge of your areas is showing up and becoming quite harsh, one little trick you can use is you can group it on its own and then you can apply a certain amount of blur or you can feather the edges, whichever takes your fancy. So the illustration of a bee that I've used in this example, we could have reproduced a lot of this quite simply using vector shapes. But I just wanted to show you with something simple to work on how we can use this to create these smooth gradients and we're covering multiple paths. So unlike the usual vector graphics where you can only work on one path at a time, with this method we can blur sections of paths and we can blur multiple paths. So it makes it quite powerful. When I researched and developed this process, I had vector portraits in mind, but I'm sure it can be used for lots of other purposes. Hope you find a use for it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.